Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Welcome to Common Ground, I'm your host, Ashley Hall. On this week's episode of Common Ground, Brad Wegscheid, an artist from Wadena, creates a commissioned ceramic wall hanging mural for the Tri-County Hospital in Wadena. His work, The Caring Tree, is interactive art that patients and their friends and family can post notes of hope and healing to during their time at the hospital. Hi, my name's Brad Wigscheid. I'm an artist in Wadena, Minnesota, and I do uh, illustration, woodworking, some sculpture, and I like to do ceramics as well. Today I'll be showing you a project that I'm working on for the Tri-County Hospital here in town. It's a commissioned wall mural. This is a sketch that I did for this piece. This final project is going to be four feet tall and five feet wide. Each tile is uh, approximately about a foot square, uh, so there'll be 20 tiles total. And then this is the sketch that I had presented to the hospital as to how the project would look in its finished state. They're calling this a, a caring tree and the hospital's going to hang this uh, near the ICU area and then the patients, uh, guests and whatnot will post uh, little notes of love and warm wishes around this caring tree that will be hanging in the hospital. The pieces broke up into uh, several smaller pieces because when working with ceramic it'd be impossible to make a piece this large uh, four feet by five feet, there, it'd be hard to find a kiln that you could fire that whole thing in. And then if you did, it would probably shatter or break during the firing process. So by breaking it up into smaller pieces, then it can be handled and transported and hung and displayed easier. And then also when this is displayed, there'll be a gap between the tiles to kind of emphasize and exaggerate that it is individual pieces put together. The carrying tree is commissioned by the Tri-County Hospital uh, through a program called their um, Healing Arts Program. The Healing Arts Program, uh, they have a little gallery down in the basement that is sponsored and run by their Healing Arts Program. And then also any artwork that they hang on the walls from local and area artists are also purchased and organized through that Healing Arts Program. After I presented the sketch to the hospital, I made some test tiles and did some uh, test patterns and some test glazes. And I fired those in the kill to see how they would turn out and, and which ones worked best for this project. I was going for a very earthy, monotone, not highly energetic, just really calm and, and peaceful look. So these are a sample of some of the test tiles I did. There's various glazes and oxides that I used. Uh, the final project, the background of the piece, is going to be this clay here. It's a, it's a darker gray body and it's covered with an oxide wash that's then brushed off a little bit so it appears real nice and matte like that. And then the actual tree parts of the project will have this glaze on it so that you'll have the matte background with the shinier tree image on it and uh, they work together to kind of create that uh, monochrome color but the matte and shiny difference. When I was looking at the clays and the various glazes, I knew that I wanted to go with really comforting, earthy tones. So I picked clays that would fire to those certain set colors and glazes that were kind of in that range. And then I just combined them in various ways to see how they would look. There's a lot of thinking and planning that goes into this, especially a piece like this. From the original sketch to the, the making of the test tiles to all of the molds that I had to make uh, to create the various barks and branch pieces. Uh, the prep time on this particular project probably took just about as much time as the actual creation of the piece. Some of my molds are made out of ceramic and some are made out of plaster. Over here we can take a look at some of those. This first mold I have here is uh, my bark mold and all I did was I stripped a piece of bark, I believe it was a piece of ash actually, off of a tree, laid it flat and then poured some plaster over the top of it um, and then after it was dry I, I took the bark out of there and then I use that, I just take the soft clay, press it into the mold, and then I get that texture on the clay. 
from there I can cut out my various uh, branches and whatnot that I need to create the piece. I created these molds here. Uh, these molds are smaller twigs and, and branches as the tree comes into its its ending of the branch and whatnot, the, the branches go much smaller. These twigs are far too small to cast in plaster, so I rolled out a soft slab and I pressed the branches into the wet clay and, and got the uh, impression of that twig into the clay. And then once I fired it in the kill, then it became this hard uh, plate that I could use to press wet clay into to get that image into the wet clay. So to start my tiles off, I have to roll a slab of clay out and I just slowly start to mash it down. I also keep flipping the clay over as I'm flattening it to help reduce warping and whatnot that comes from the clay being stretched too much in one direction. So after I get it about an inch thick or so, then I start to roll it thinner. I've got a wooden dowel that I use to roll these out and I just start rolling it smoother and flatter and again as I'm doing this I go in multiple directions so that the clay doesn't uh, want to curl back it maintains a little bit of memory and if you keep going in the same direction it'll tend to dry and warp into an arc every clay has a different percentage of how much it shrinks the particular clay that I'm working with shrinks from its wet stage to its finished stage about nine or ten percent so if I want a 12 inch tile I have to make it 10 percent bigger than 12 inches so that when it's finally done it will be the size that I want okay now I'm gonna switch over here once I get the clay a little bit thinner I want to make sure that I don't get it uh, too thin. So I have these two sticks cut the same thickness and I lay those on either side. And that gives a surface for my dowel to ride on so that I can make the clay uniform in thickness and make sure that it doesn't have any thin or thick spots in it. I've picked some leaves off of trees and then I've sandwiched them between some boards so that they dry so they're nice and flat and stiff. And all I do is I just lay them onto the slab and whatever looks appealing to my eye. Um, I lay the leaves on here, veins down, so that the slab gets the maximum amount of uh, texture in it. And I uh, am not setting my piece to one particular, it's not an oak tree, it's not an ash tree, it's not a popple tree. This whole project is a combination of several kinds of trees as an artistic representation of a tree. So I use oak leaves and elm leaves and ash leaves and basswood leaves. It's an artistic or aesthetic choice. I just chose to, to randomly just represent a tree in its essence as opposed to a specific type of tree just as an artistic and creative choice to make it a little bit more interesting and, and not so representational. Now the leaves are embedded in the clay. The next step is to uh, remove them from the clay so that I have just the impression of the leaf in the clay. And all I do is I gently pull the leaves out uh, try not to tear them or leave little parts of leaf stuck in the clay. Once I take the leaves off here, I lay them back on my board so that I can squish them and keep them flat. By being rolled into the clay, they pick up some moisture and then they want to warp if I just leave them without a weight on top of them. This way I can use them for more than one tile. What I've done is I created a 12 inch plus 10 percent square and I use my clay knife and I just trace along that slab and cut out my 12 inch plus 10 percent tile shape. I went to high school at the Minnesota Center for Arts Education. I uh, was in the visual arts program there. I went on and I got a degree in communication arts which is graphic design and then I did graphic design for 10-15 years and then now I'm making the switch from commercial art to uh, fine art. So then I throw my template back on top and I just trim off that excess clay. And the final thing that I do is I take these scraps that I have left over and I wedge them back into a air-free ball. What I'm doing here is I'm rolling out my scrap so that I can use it to make the sides of my tile. About 12 inches square and and one and a half inches or so tall. And instead of making that a solid piece of clay, I make a hollow box. 
so I have to roll out sides that I can then adhere to the back of that to give the tile its depth of one and a half inches. I've made another template here and this is the height of the side of my tile. So I just cut out strips out of this and then I use these strips for the various construction of the sides and support of the tile. So I just cut them out with my template and I take those and I lay them on the drywall and then I use my board to kind of straighten them up a little bit so they dry as straight as possible. And then the final little bit of clay that I have left <coughs> goes into my bucket and gets reused later. Once I get these slabs rolled out in the sides, the face of the tile, I lay it over here on my stack. And I put another piece of drywall on top. And then I'll apply a little weight on there or I'll keep stacking up the tiles. And then I'll leave those sit there until they become leather hard and they're workable. So depending on the, the weather, the humidity, and the temperature, these can take a various amount of time to get to what's called a leather hard stage. Once it gets to that leather hard stage, then I can manipulate it and working it without it sagging and, and falling apart. And leather hard just means that the pieces have become slightly flexible, but much more rigid than what they were when the clay was entirely wet. I have to get on the back side of this tile because I'm going to add my sides so that the tile gains a little bit of depth. And I grab a piece of wall that I made earlier that's leather hard now. Just kind of square up one end of it. If you want to first uh, score, the, score the clay. To hold these pieces together, I use what's called slip. Basically, slip is just uh, the clay with a whole bunch of water added, so it becomes like a thick uh, pudding. And I just line it up and then firmly press it down, line it up with my thumb to the edge of the tile piece, and I just kind of push it on there real nice and firm so all the slip squeezes out, and then that piece is attached there. Take all that extra slip off, and I just kind of goo it inside of here. And that's it for the construction on the back of the tile. I've got my corner supports in to give the corners a little bit more strength. I've got my cross pieces in the center to keep the center from dropping down when it's fired. And I'm ready to flip this whole thing over and do the top. I just use my little dental pick to just kind of clean up these edges so it's not jagged and sharp. Just kind of round them off. Now that I have this base finished, all 20 of the tiles start off this way. I can start applying the, the branches and the various tree elements on top of that. Now I'm going to grab my sketch. I've marked every tile that I've made and I've got to look at this map that I have here and decide which one that I'm going to make next. Some of the tiles have branches that join into other uh, tiles so there's kind of an order or a system that you have to do it so that you can work from biggest branch on down to the smallest ones and get a nice smooth even flow from tile to tile. There's a tile that's already been done on the right side of this one so I've grabbed that tile and then I'm going to lay it next to this one so that I can see how the uh, piece lines up and then I can make some measurements and marks so that the work flows from tile to tile. And then I'm going to mark on the edge of my tile here kind of where this branch is with my needle tool. So I just mark the edges so I have a reference point. And then I also like to kind of get an angle on the branch so that the angle stays consistent from tile to tile. So I just kind of draw myself a rough little <coughs> angle guide on there so I know how the branch is coming across. So then once I have that, I can lay the finished tile back over here. I'm going to use one of the ceramic molds that I made and then you can see here I have like a half branch kind of a thing. These are bigger branches here, these three. And I'm going to use one of those three to start this branch. Just working this into a cylindrical shape, something that will press into the mold nicely. Once I get that, then I just take it and I firmly press it into the mold that I made. And I just peel it out of there. It's just a press mold, meaning that you just press your material in there to get the impression. And when I pull that out, then I have that stick that's got like a bark pattern on it. Again, it's just a wire I'm cutting with. And I just kind of shave off all that extra that back of the stick that I don't want to use. There's my stick. And then that back piece, I just lay that over there to reuse that later. At this point, I'm just kind of laying it on there to get a starting point. And I'm going to trim off my extra here on the end, on the edge of the tile. So now this branch is coming in, and I'm going to divide that off into some smaller branches. So I'm going to 
I think start dividing my branch right about here. So I just cut an angled cut on it like that. From there I can join other pieces on. Now I'm looking for smaller branches that I want to use and I just kind of, I look at what I have and I, I pick out shapes of twigs and stuff that I think are going to work well here. Here I'm pressing the, the clay into the mold where there's a smaller twig on the mold so that I can uh, get the shape of that. And this uh, particular branch is a Y-shaped one, so I've also got to kind of come off to the side on that one to get that Y shape into this branch as well. So once I have that pressed in there, just like the little bit bigger branch, then I just peel that off the mold and I've got my start of a stick shape there. And this one's a little bit more delicate than the other branch was, so to cut this one out, I start with a needle tool and I just trim off all my excess on the edges. And all I'm doing is just cutting this piece in half. And as I'm cutting this, I'm trying really careful not to apply too much pressure on the top of my stick shape because this wet clay will crumble really easily and I don't want to ruin the pattern that I have on the stick. And I'm going to kind of gently lay that up on here too. And at this point I'm just kind of roughly laying stuff down and seeing how it looks. So I'm going to cut off my stick right there. Just lay that piece on there. I'm going to have the branch splitting off from here so I need to mold another piece that's going to come off down here. Now i got to score all these pieces so that I can assemble them just like I did when I built the tile. So I just scratch inside of my lines that I made. Try and go in at least two directions with my scratch in here so I get a nice texture on there for the slip to stick to. And then as I get into the thinner branches, I have this little pickle fork that I use. It's got two little prongs on it. That helps me get in there and get the smaller areas. Now I'm ready to start attaching my, my limbs and branches on this tile. So I pick up the first piece where I'm starting and I'm going to score the back of that. And as I'm doing this, I got to hold it in my hand real delicately so I don't damage the pattern and the texture on the back of this too much. I can repair that later, but I want to do as little repair as I can. And then on the back of this, I'm applying some slip again, which is my glue to hold everything together. Now when I lay this on there, I have to be sure to get all the air worked out of there because any little air pockets that are between my pieces can cause extra moisture in there and then the piece could uh, explode or crack or break in the kill. So I lay that on there and I just kind of real gently wiggle it. Just kind of rock it around until I see the slip squirting out on all the sides. And then I know that I'm working out all the air and that the piece is sticking to the tile. I have to score the end of this so that I can join the next piece. Flip that over, lay it on there. And again, I'm just going to wiggle that. Right now, there's a real rough seam where the two pieces come together. I'm not worrying about that yet. So I'm going to come back and clean it all up and take care of this slip that's squirting out and take care of all my seams. Right now, I'm just getting the pieces attached. I want to be really careful with these small ones so I don't put too much slip on there. So it squirts out all over and ruins the background texture that I have on the tile. But I want to get just enough on there so it just barely squirts out the sides. And I flip that over, try and support it so it don't break. And I kind of tap it and work it on there again so that slip squirts out. Now before that slip dries too much, I want to get my brush here and I want to pick that slip up off the back of the tile so it's clean and leaves a nice sharp edge and I want to do that before it dries too much. I found throughout this process that the brush works the best for me because it doesn't scratch or mar the background and the bristles just gently pick up that slip and just kind of pick it up, clean it up 
and then I can just kind of brush it up onto the stick a little bit. And you can see here how it cleans up that edge really nicely. And because the background of the tile is so much harder than the slip, it doesn't hardly mark it at all with them soft bristles. And I can just clean that up. Keep taking the slip off and I'm just scraping it in my hand so it doesn't build up on the brush. And this just leaves me a really nice sharp edge that I can work with. And just go around the whole branch and clean that slip up. And at this point I'm still not too worried about final shape and rough edges and whatnot. I'm just trying to get the pieces roughed in, get them laid on the tile, get the slip cleaned up before it dries. Just tapping that on there, real gentle, but enough to get the slip to squirt out. Work all the air bubbles out of the back side of it. I'm going to add these, those super tiny little twigs here. And as I'm laying these on there, I don't want the twigs straight because branches don't grow perfectly straight. So I'm just kind of laying them on there so they just kind of flow and look real organic and real natural. You don't want the tree to look any more mechanical than it's going to. I'm going to take my brush again, pick up that extra slip that squirted out, clean up my edge. All right, I have all of the uh, twigs and branches applied here now. So now I'm gonna go through and clean up all of my joints and edges so that everything flows nicely and it looks like it's all one continuous uh, organic piece. And to do that, I've got a couple pieces of ceramic here that I've cast, pieces of mud that have been fired and they're hard and they're just real rough. They're little bark textures and stuff and I could press those in and I can sculpt with those and that keeps me from getting really hard mechanical edges and then I also have a little piece of uh, cement here that I use it's got a real rough edge on it so I use those three tools and along with my needle tool to kind of sculpt and, and help me keep it looking really organic so when I see an edge that's a little rough I just kind of poke at it and smooth it and adjust it and if the edges get too sharp I just kind of smush them a little bit with my finger Keep that organic look to it. That one looks pretty good. I got a little bit I want to shave off here. It kind of tapers off a little bit too quickly. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off with my needle tool. Try not to scratch the background of the tile because if I do that, then I ruin my leaf pattern I have there. So that joint looks pretty good. All right, well, I think this tile is done now. So that one's finished. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, lay this underneath plastic so it dries really slowly. And depending on temperature, that could be anywhere from a week to two weeks. Uh, then once it's bone dry, which just means that there's completely no moisture left in the clay and it's, it's just you know dry, then I will apply the oxides on the background. I'll apply the glazes onto the branches and then I will fire these in my electric kill and this piece will be fired just one time each. Normally you would bisque fire and then apply glazes and then fire it a second time. For my project I'm using really thin glaze and oxides so I can get away with just firing this project once which cuts my electricity in half uh, for this project and saves me a little bit of expense.
These are the two tiles that go together and now I've laid the two finished tiles side by side and they look, they're really flowing nicely and it looks very organic and very natural. Here's the final carrying tree at Troy County Hospital. Uh, the final product is a little over five feet wide and four feet tall. The tiles are hung about two inches apart to kind of give a little bit of a grid and a little bit more dimensionality to the piece. Um, when I was working on it, uh, the, the oxides and stuff were applied to the background. Now here you can see what they look like fired. Uh, the tree pieces, which were cast from the plaster molds, are covered with uh, glaze, which is why they have a little bit of a shine to them as opposed to the uh, flatter background image. Um, I think the piece turned out really nice, and it sits here at the end of a hall in a little waiting area. Uh, it's got uh, windows on both sides, so the light catches it very nicely. Um, the staff is very happy about the piece, and they're excited to, to start putting it in use so that the patients can, can leave notes for the staff and, and for their loved ones that are in the hospital. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you next week right here on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any Common Ground segment, visit us at lptv.org backslash common ground. individual segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.